What's poppin' everybody? This is the Cartoon Kid, Ray Rollins, and today we're continuing the 25 Days of Christmas Cartoons Marathon with an episode of Cat Dog, Season 3, Episode 2, A Very Cat Dog Christmas. Now, of course, before we get into this episode, we gotta give you that episode breakdown. So, dog and cat, obviously, you know, they're mutants. They're fused together, I suppose you can say. And it's Christmas time. Cat, he wants a nice, shiny sports car. You know, he's he has this gr- greedy-ass personality. He wants a sports car so damn bad. Okay, and dog, he has the whole, I want to say the, the style of pinky. You know, he has a nice pinky personality where he cares about everybody, man. He wants to make sure everybody has the best thing that they want for Christmas. He wants to make sure his buddy cat's all taken care of. And they go to see Santa. Now, Santa picks up on Cat's greedy personality. And to make a long story short, when they're there at the mall seeing Santa, there's this rich-ass motherfucker and his daughter who wants to buy Cat Dog. And, you know, with the uncle being like, yo, hey, I can basically buy you anything I want, so I want to buy you two for my daughter for Christmas. So the uncle's like, you know what? I'm going to buy you guys for my niece. So cat and dog were like at first, nah, you know what? I ain't, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. We're not going. But cat realizing that, yo, if we go with these people, they're rich. We're going to get everything you want. We want. So dog, you're going to get you a nice T-bone bone. And I'm going to have my shiny red sports car. Now, we're not going to mention the fact, like, what the hell does a cat need with a sports car? But you know what? It's cartoon logic, so we're, we're just going to toss that in the back right, for right now. But they go with them. Santa gets so damn pissed. He's like, hey, man, everybody's just losing the Christmas spirit. It's not about what you're getting. So it, it, Christmas is in your heart. It's not about all the gifts. So he gets so upset. He cancels Christmas, man. All the Christmas. It, everything loses its Christmas feel. Nobody gets gifts. Nothing. So everybody's upset at Cat Dog. They're trying to get ready to go after him. But as they're at the man that's driving around in a little sports car, they come to the premonition like, hey, this ain't this ain't what it's all cracked up to be. I want to go home. I want our old Christmas traditions back. So to make a long story short, they come to their sentences and they go home with all their friends. And the dog, obviously being as good spirited as he is, he, he basically convinces everybody, yo, Christmas isn't about what you get. It's about celebrating everybody around you, you know, celebrating Santa Claus and the whole idea of, of Jesus and whatnot. You know, all the, all the basic Christmas shit. Santa, of course, sees this and he's like, all right, man, you guys, I see you guys reclaim the Christmas spirit. Boom. Christmas is back on. Santa's feeling good about himself and everything. And that's the basic premise of their episode. Well, fuck it. I just told you the whole episode, not the basic premise. I just told you the whole damn episode. But with all that being said, let's get into first impressions. Mr. Alex Payne, what do you think of this episode? Um, My first impression for this episode, I have two first impressions. Number one, uh, uh, the song is fire. I like the song. But um, my second first impression was like, the it was... It, um, Santa's, vo- Santa's voice, man, was friggin' gnawing at me a lot. And turns out he's voiced by the same guy who voices the Flying Dutchman from SpongeBob. Like, <laughs> I didn't, like, I didn't oh. notice that. I really, I really didn't notice that. I'm not I lying. Saying, I, I did not notice that notice one. It. Like that, that friggin', that was eating me alive immediately. I was like, why the fuck does that sound it, it like, Oh, it's the Flying of, Dutchman. It has some type of familiarity to it. But I just really didn't. I don't go at voices like you do. As weird as it sounds, I do not go at voices like you do. But yeah, but I was so basically you counter. Back in Isaac, though. You no, know. yeah, and I, I probably will since you said that. If I listen back to it when I'm at, you know, yeah, maybe I will. But to counter, I don't like, I don't like my fucking cartoon songs and musical. I don't, I don't, I don't get along with those very well. I mean, especially with this one was I. I just normally don't like that stuff, but. My first impression is, like I said, during the episode breakdown, one, what the hell is a cat doing driving a sports car? But two, and yeah, I but noticed I mean, this. All things, con- 
think, all things considered, I feel like that's the last question you should ask. No, obviously, and I, I even said that back then. But the other thing that I noticed is like, hmm, one, cat and dogs are supposed to be enemies. They're usually portrayed as enemies in cartoons. So it's cool that, you know, they're getting along and whatnot. But they always say that cats are smart. That's basically a stereotype of cats are smart and dogs are kind of, you know, silly willy. I wouldn't say stupid, but dog is kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Childishly stupid. dumb. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Childishly dumb in a nice way. Because cat was, or dog was saying, no, no, I'm my bad. I fucked that up. Cat was saying like, oh yeah, are you thinking what I'm thinking or something like that? Oh yeah, drink out of a toilet bowl? <laughs> and Cat's like, nah, nah, I'm not thinking about that. And then he basically tells him, well, yeah, we're, we're going to go to the rich people's house and, you know, get our Christmas gifts, you know, get what we want for Christmas. So I like how Cat's portrayed to be the smart one. It's stereotypical, but, you know, it's kind of cool. And I, I like how they get along together. Like cats and dogs are always portrayed to be enemies, but, you know, they're they're cool, which is awesome. Well, they're um, infused together, so that would be kind of hard, difficult if they didn't get along. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's get into moments. What are some of your standout moments of this episode? To be honest, and this kind of slips into the review a little bit, I thought this episode was pretty boring, so I really don't have any standout moments. Hmm. Okay, okay. And I, I don't want to agree with you, Ness. I wouldn't say it was boring, but it was like, ah, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of meh, if you ask me. But I will say this, and I, I got a comment on this. Um, cat's demeanor, like a lot of kids are like that these days, man. They always worry about what they. And I really wonder, do they really know like the meaning of Christmas? Cause me personally, when I was younger, I'm gonna be real with you. Christmas was all about getting gifts <laughs> and eating. So <laughs> that's the whole premise of Christmas for me. I didn't know any. I didn't. I, to be honest with you, I didn't know it had anything to do with Jesus or anything like that. We just celebrated the fact, like, whoa, Santa Claus is coming. We're getting gifts. That's all I knew what Christmas was. And that's the whole premise of, like, this episode. Cat, dog, being greedy. He's always worried about the gifts. But it's not about the gifts. It's about your family and, you know, the people around you, basically. And that's what they're trying to portray with this episode. And I feel like a lot of kids get that way. And I, I, I thought it was cool how they basically try to portray that in this episode. Um, I thought it was pretty cool, too, how Santa basically canceled Christmas. He's like, ah, you know what? Y'all don't y'all don't give a fuck about Christmas. Y'all want to be too damn greedy. So you know what? We're canceling Christmas. And then obviously, dog came to his senses, help people like realize the right way to go down. So you know, he brought it back and all that good shit. Um, but I'm kind of like you. I don't have that many moments in this episode, honestly. It was kind of very mass, kind of. I wouldn't say boring. The strange thing is though, I took more to this than I did. Uh, what's the show where we where we just did Codename Kids Next Door? So I, I feel I like that's be, that. that's because this one is so much more simple though. Yeah, that too. But I don't know. I I just kind of I I just enjoyed it more, man. I like I said I, in that review, I didn't like the whole fighting aspect of it either. Um, but to get to my review, story was good. It was decent. I mentioned that several times. It was pretty darn decent. It's not, you know, not the greatest thing in the world. So it was I. It's pretty boring, though. I, I ain't even going to stunt with you. So what's your review? My thoughts, uh, the, the story, I feel like the story had an interesting idea, but they realistically didn't use it properly because it's like, because, I mean, really, what happened to make, they literally just decided that they didn't want to do for, they just wanted to go home. Like, it wasn't like, Nothing right. realistically happened or whatever. They just decided, it's like, oh well, we should it's, just go. It's home. like they, it's like they got homesick, man. It's like they got homesick, which, I <laughs> like, mean, I wouldn't say is like. <laughs> like they, they literally just decided not, literally nothing. And the, and the funny and the fucked up thing is, they had the plot point there to make the, like because they had the they had the evil girl there they could have easily let her do something really fucked up to them then they decide they want to go home. i mean she kind of did she was, yeah um, but she did that after they made the decision to go home right was, true, she wasn't even true, fucking true. with them they was driving around in the car having all type of fun 
And then he was like, you know what, we should just go home. And then when they tried to leave, that's when she tr- threw them in the cage and all that. Right. Crazy. So it's, it's like, fucked up. I, tr- I tried to build this episode up, man. I tried to. <laughs> so I if really they did, did but if they like, did it, in, if they did that in reverse, then I would have been like, okay, yeah, that may, like if like let's say if they did something or said they wanted to go out or just something, and then she then she's like, no, you're not going anywhere. I throw them in the cage or something shit like that. It's like okay, and then they was like. Man, you know, sitting in the cage. It's like, man, you know, I wish I could go back to the regular Christmas or whatever. Then that would have been um, beautiful. That would have been perfect. But yeah, um, I wouldn't say. Now nah, I wouldn't say that makes it makes it ter- terrible or nothing. It's just, it's just a weird, uh, um, you know, lapse in the story. It's right, like, right, right. Um, You're one hundred percent right. But um, I it's just. I just thought it was mostly dull for the most right. part. Like it was mostly dull, and most of the characters were just assholes, really. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because that's the main premise of the episode, man. It's built on greed, and like you said, from what I basically took from it, and like I said earlier, is like they wanted to go home. From what I'm understanding, was because they're like homesick. Because homeboy was like, oh, you know. Yeah, it's a, they see that, uh, what do you call it, metal tree or whatever. It's yeah. like, man, it's not like our regular Christmas tree. They started missing their regular Christmas traditions. So th- that in a, it's an all right out, but their out could have been a lot better. Like you said, they could have capitalized on having the evil girl. So I yeah. don't know, man. And um, just, my other thing is, like, th- when you really think about it, like, they, they pretty much chose – the moral and plot point of every single Christmas episode that there's ever been. Like, they didn't do nothing new, unique. It just ended with, we should be with our family. Right, right. Let me teach yeah. you how to love your family. Right, Boy, right. We, it's not like <laughs> you don't have 9,876,853 versions of that out there. Right, you're right. You're 100% <laughs> right. What is your rating for this episode, though? Um, my rating, I, I, I think I'm gonna have to give it a nice, soft five point five. Okay, okay. And see, it's like slightly you said, above middle of the road, I guess. Okay, and like you said, and you bring up good, great points because I didn't really even think of that. Like you said, the, a little, like you said, laughs in a plot. Like why, why? Why did you not use the motherfucking evil girl? Because that's what I thought they were going to do. That's funny. You know, you know it's Use funny the evil though. girl as an out. Because the, the thing is, usually when, story, when stories have the, the, these type of issues, it's because they don't have any conflict in the right. story. But yeah, right. this story had the, had the perfect conflict, but they decided not to use it in, in making their decision. Right. Yeah, I mean, the story story is all right, but like you said, that one big flaw that you pointed out, and I, I didn't even. That's like if I really a, didn't even think. Of, he decides you, to break out. He decides to break out because he sees a poster on the wall instead of be, deciding to break out because he got beat the, the beat the fuck up or some shit like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. This 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 episode was I. Right. It was I. Right. Like you said, it's nothing to. It's nothing special at all. They followed basically had the same ending as a good portion of Christmas shows out there. Oh yeah, it's all about loving your family. Da da da. Woo woo woo. Whatever. Um, it was kind of kind of meh, like I said, but it's it's still okay. It's alright. It's not the best out there, but it's alright. For the first episode that I seen of Cat Dog, I honestly took to it kind of kind of well and. I, Honestly, say that as an episode, I would check Cat Dog out a little bit more. Um, it's kind of like code name Kids Next Door. It's like, eh, you know, I didn't identify with that because, like you said, it may be a little complex, but you know, for me, this was all right. So I'm gonna give this one a nice six out of ten. You give this a nice 5.5 out of ten, man. There you guys have it. This has been our review for Cat Dog season three, episode two, a very Cat Dog Christmas. And this is the Cartoon Kid channel where we talk cartoons and we do it daily, baby. This is the 25 Days of Christmas Cartoons Marathon. And as always, toss your opinions down in the comments box below. Tell us what you think of this episode. Tell us if you liked it. Tell us if you hate it. And tell us if you want 
us to do some other cartoon reviews that may relate to this marathon. Or if you got some ideas on what we should review after the marathon, man, hit us up. Let us know. And I'll be sure to get back to you in the comments box down below. But until then, we will see you when we see you. Peace out, everybody.